but just ended. And there are dozens and dozens of American bodies laying all over the ground, dead bodies. And the Japanese started to come through, and they were using their bayonets, and they would they would stick the body to make sure it was dead. You know, that one's not living, that one's not living. And he pretended to be dead. But it didn't matter because they were coming through and bayoneting people. Right. But he, Dead bodies, I mean. Right. But he, he pretended to be dead. And apparently, obviously, because he lived long after that, they didn't bayonet him, but they went through his pockets and took his cigarettes and his lighter and his, his wallet. Wow. And uh, So they forgot. Apparently. And he uh, he made a mess of himself. And I certainly would, too. I couldn't even imagine. Could you imagine? That must have been pretty uh, freaky. Very wow. freaky, yeah. Yes, and and supposedly there's some pictures floating around of fields that he shouldn't have been taking pictures of. That uh, Right. <laughs> you, wow. don't want, you don't want to let that stuff out. So one day, I may be the, the recipient of those when my parents pass on. But... Um, yeah, it's just uh it's really it's really tough to try and and teach these teenagers and the millennials and the p- kids that are in their 20s it's it's seemingly more difficult to teach them this history that has happened after they've already been indoctrinated. Right. Um you know what movie I saw right before I got here? What's that? To Hell and Back with Audie Murphy. Really? Yes. Wow. Well, I've never seen it before. This is the first time I ever seen it. Uh, and it's in black and white, isn't no, it? It's no, in it's color. color. Okay. Um, yeah, because it was made in 1955, which actually that's pretty old for a color movie. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Audie mm-hmm. Murphy actually starred in it. He was the star, and he was so he played himself. Right. And. I've seen a lot of World War II movies over the years, and so, and I, I've heard about this Audie Murphy movie, and I figured that it was going to be really sensational and just full of all kinds of just wild, crazy stuff, because the guy won, he was the most decorated war hero in the entire war for the American side. I don't know if there was anybody on, on from any country that had done as many things to earn as many decorations as Audie Murphy. He was like a, a Medal of Honor winner. He won so many medals. It's ridiculous. Two silver stars, which we've talked about silver stars on this show before. And here's what um, I can tell you about this movie. I was surprised at how realistic it was. Everything that he did was very plausible. Wow. It wasn't like he did a bunch of stuff that was... They didn't unimaginable hold, they didn't hold back well they made it very realistic and i guarantee you that audie murphy himself since he was the subject of his own life and he you know what i'm saying he right. was probably thinking no i want this to look and feel and be presented exactly the way i remember it right and right. so he did it he acted it out and they captured it in in this film and and uh it was very realistic I was I was really amazed. It was there was just there was none of that impossible, ridiculous, um, you know, the stuff that you see now, right? Where there's all the CGI and there's like uh, <laughs> um, uh, the guy from um, Scientology, the jumping on the couch guy. Uh, uh, oh, Tom Cruise! Yeah, Tom Cruise, <laughs> <laughs> the couch guy. The ca- you know when he when he L. Ron Hubbard when he's on a he's hanging from a helicopter in a subway tunnel and when it blows up it launches him forward onto the high speed train it was probably going what 2 250 250 right. miles an hour right and he was able to cling on to it by wrapping his arms around the train well, cuz that's that's realistic you could you could be no probably not yeah Audie yeah. murphy didn't do anything like that and that's what i liked about this movie because the only thing that he did that i thought was amazing was the um that at the very end of the movie, and I guarantee you this was the thing that sealed the deal for his legacy because, uh, oh, spoiler alert, by the way. <laughs> um, so in the movie, he does a lot of things that are um, 
you know, he, he has very good leadership skills, which is amazing because he looked like the youngest guy there. Uh, they made fun of him in the beginning for looking like such a baby. And he actually lied about his age in order to get into the army in the first place. Yeah, said a, they said a lot of guys that were 16, 17 years old yeah. dropping out of high school. Well, he initially not? tried to sign up for the Marine Corps and the Navy using a guardian signature because his mother died and his dad ran off and uh, was never seen from again. Right. The, and, yeah. and so so anyway, they said, no, 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 try the army. <laughs> That's what the Marines said when he got to the Navy. Try the army. They said, try the army. Wow. So I guess when he got to the army, he just forged, he just, he just falsified you know the, documents. You know, the Air Force says, go, if you can't pass the test, go to the army. Everybody, just go to the go army. To the army. So he ended up in the army, but with with fake documents and stuff like that. And um, um, so here, so all the heroic stuff he does throughout the movie is just more like strong leadership, right? Right. But at the very end, they're being overrun by all the, this entire tank squadron or whatever they call them. I don't know what a tank, uh, whatever. With the German, or German? Ger yep, they were Germany. The Panzers. No, but uh, if, if it was like a, a platoon or a. Or a company, okay. or whatever they, whatever it was, but it was a whole bunch of tanks, and behind the tanks was a whole bunch of foot soldiers, oh. and they were all coming, and there was nothing they could do. So what, basically, what they did was is they uh, faked like they can hold them off, and oh, and he called in art artillery, and started blowing them to smithereens, and the tanks turned for cover to get out of the artillery. He then got up on a disabled tank and started shooting the foot soldiers with the 50 cal. Oh, I remember that part. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Until uh, they were pretty much either mostly dead or whatever. What happened then was is the tanks realized without the foot soldiers, we're kind of sitting ducks here. Because you could just throw a grenade at them. Oh, yeah. So they turned and, and, and retreated. And and the whole time, while he's shooting all these people, all, his entire platoon was taking cover in the woods. Right. They were like, we ain't going out there. Are you crazy? <laughs> like, you all, you and he actually got shot, and, and uh, he came back and said, all right, guys, we're safe. And then he collapsed, and that's when they realized he was shot in the hip. And he ended up having to get out of the, the Army and everything because of the injury to his hip when he wanted to right. stay in for 20 years and all that. So. Origi originally, the movie was in black and white, but remade in color. Oh, so, so I saw a... So you could get a, a color version. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. And that's they've done they've done a lot of black and white. It movies. looked like it was filmed in color, but I guess they did a good enough job of colorizing it. They've got some great technology nowadays. When it are comes you to kidding that. me? I found this woman <laughs> on um, on Twitter who yeah. colorizes really old black and white photos, and she, it is the most amazing thing you've ever seen in your life. Really, it's so realistic. It looks like. You could have taken these pictures just a couple days ago. Wow! Yeah, it's amazing. And she, she. Oh, I wish I could find. If I find out, I'm gonna. I'll tell you guys what it is. You gotta check it out. It is amazing. So, so check this. Check out what I found. This little tidbit and nugget moving right along. Okay. It's from a white Corleone when I'm mobbing Let the beat drop in I'm Floyd Mayweather if I'm boxing I'm Los Angeles cause I'm dodging Is it too shocking? A microphone rocking A microphone rocking I hear the tiger and y'all can't stop me You're looking like a donkey Waking up groggy Your whole flow is soggy I'm Mr. Miyagi I'ma make a bottle pop Donald Trump dog And I'ma party till I drop Take my trunks off And I'ma make a bottle pop Donald Trump dog And I'ma, 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 I'ma Donald Trump <laughs> Donald Trump? What? What? This? What this, is he saying? Yeah, this song. He's, he's saying it. I'm a Donald Trump wall, and the whole video is. You know, you know, Donald Trump is what Americans love. Donald Trump is what Americans aspire to be: rich, powerful, do what you want to do, say what you want to say, be how you want to be. That's kind of down like. The, the, American dream. Ice Cube is pro Trump. Yes, that is awesome. Ice Cube's come out pro Trump. Um, this whole, this whole movement, if you will, it is catering to a different era, a different generation, and there's a lot of people jumping on board from all, all walks of life in the news media. Once there's an article earlier that I've got about. Trump, Trump can't get the women. Trump can't get blacks. 
black Americans and women. Yeah, that ain't, that ain't true. At all. <laughs> so, what I'm starting to see, it's it's not true. These people are coming out on the internet all over, and that's the thing the media, the, the news media can't handle. Where is all that hate coming from? Well, you know, wait a minute now. Just because Silk you black, you and, uh, don't have to vote Democrat. That's right. Diamond. Those people have been conditioned to think one way, to see it one way. Yes. And I don't want to be inside of a box anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't need the black leaders telling me how to vote. Mm -hmm. I don't need the media telling me how to vote. Mm -hmm. I have my own mind. I can think for myself. I don't need anyone feeding me their narrative. That's right. I already got the narrative that I want to go with. I want the wall up so our border can be secure. Yes. I want the jobs back where we're thriving. And we want our country united. You know, there, there, it takes, it's hard for me to explain to you how I, how I view all this stuff. I went to 13 years of an inner city public school that when I was in uh, second grade, they started a citywide integration program. Are we talking about Cheviot? Well, that's where it started, but it went all the way up through. I, I, we both went to the same elementary school, and I was a couple of years ahead of you. So when I went to that elementary school, it was predominantly all white. Well, and the reason why is because everybody went to their neighborhood schools. Right, and this happened to be in an old money. It was early 80s. Yeah, it was all... Back was, in the early 80s, um, you know, there were certain neighborhoods that were predominantly black and there were certain neighborhoods that were predominantly white and and nothing's really changed as far as poverty levels it seems like some of the poor neighborhoods uh or i should say some of the neighborhoods that are mostly black tend to be more of the poor neighborhoods and and if you go to like the um upper middle class suburbs it's mostly white and all that kind of stuff so there was this theory back in the 80s that oh, a liberal theory it, right that the reason black people are poor is because they have to live in poor areas and they have to go to schools that have poor kids in them so why don't we fix that by mixing it all up and putting uh, poor black kids in upper middle class schools and whatnot and then of course projects they were doing uh, housing projects in um, nicer areas in fact the Fay apartments they put the Fay apartments in some of the most prime real estate in the whole city because it was on top of the hill overlooking the city. I mean, you right. can't buy that kind of well, Faye real estate. Fay Apartments and um, and the one that's been taken down now. Oh, uh, English Woods. English Woods. The my, top of the hill. My grandfather, when he got out of the war, ironically, he got married to my grandmother. And they said, hey, I, we're going to move into the best apartment we can move into. He moved into English Woods. And what color was he? It's a white guy. I asked that because I didn't think you were allowed to if you were white. <laughs> this is back in the... I mean, literally. I think that 30s. the government... Well, no, this is back in the 30s and 40s. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah, right. Well, the well, apartments sorry. wouldn't have even been built yet. Sorry, right after the war. After, so late so 40s, 30s. early 50s. Yeah, the projects wouldn't have come up until the 60s or 70s. He had to move out because they couldn't afford it. Okay. And that ex that perfectly explains <laughs> overlooking the, the beautiful Woods city project. of Cincinnati and the river and everything. So basically, it sounds to me like they would have used eminent domain to well, they had to to demolish all the rich mansions on top of the prime real estate, which is in Cincinnati. We have a lot of hills, and those hills, when you're at the top of them, some of them have beautiful panoramic views of the city, and right. because the city is surrounded by all these hills. And so what you're telling me is exactly what I always suspected, that English Woods used to be mansion territory. Oh, it was. It was very uh, – even the apartments there, they were high-end. I mean – Yeah, like high-rise Condos, apartments. like condos. Right. You wouldn't call it an apartment. It's, it's a condo. But had been demolished in order to do the – the uh, government projects Absolutely. for the poor, which was English Woods. And then later they did the Fay Apartments, right. which overlooked the city. You could, If you were downtown or anywhere in that area, uh, anywhere near the Fay Apartments in the bottom, you could see them up on top of the right. hill. Beautiful panoramic view, I'm sure. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so the next thing they decided was we need to get these the poor kids into the 
they didn't i'm going to say what they would say we need to get the black kids in the schools that have almost all whites because they'll be smarter and the, and somehow somehow they'll have a better education blah, blah blah because obviously the white kids are getting better education the black kids are getting poor education so we need to get the black kids into the in